So batik is like a very grown-up version of the crayon resist and watercolor that we used to do when we were little. The simplest way to describe the process is essentially that anything that I cover in wax will not be dyed when it is put in the dye bath. So a simple example would be if I begin with white fabric and then paint a circle with wax on top and then go in and dye that fabric blue. When I remove the wax at the end of the process, I'm going to be left with a white circle on a blue background. When I do batik, I use a combination of beeswax and microcrystalline wax, and I heat it up in an electric skillet to maintain the temperature because if wax is heated up above 200 degrees, the fumes released can actually coat your lungs and suffocate you, so you have to be very careful. Over here I'm using a jaunting tool, and it's mostly for details. The cardboard strip I'm using is to prevent drips as I drag my tool from the skillet over to my fabric. And here I'm using the brush tool, which is really good for larger areas, but I also think it's really great for achieving texture when you're painting on the fabric. The most difficult thing about the dye process is the fact that the dyes will react like watercolors when they're stacked upon one another. So for example, if my first dye bath is a light yellow and my second dye bath is a light blue, the color that I'm going to end up with is not blue, but it's going to be green. For this reason, it's very difficult to get bright opposing colors because if I were to take a very bright green and try to dye a very bright red on top, I'm going to end up with a brown, not a red, and that's just basic principle of color theory. Dyes can also be unpredictable and sometimes you just don't know what color you're going to end up with. Dyeing fabric is a pretty lengthy process which begins by soaking the fabric in a mixture of salt water. Afterwards we add the dye and move the fabric around for about 15 minutes to ensure an even coat. Then we add soda ash, which helps set the dye, and then the fabric sits in the dye for about 45 minutes to really make sure that it's all soaked into the fibers. In the fibers department, we use these very toxic concentrated dyes called MX dyes, and because of their toxicity, we actually have to stir them inside of a special booth to keep us safe. Um, if the particles get in the air and you inhale them, they're very toxic and they can make you very sick. After many layers of waxing and dyeing, the majority of the wax is removed by hand with an iron. Then, the fabric is sent to the dry cleaners to remove whatever wax might be left over. After that's done, your piece is finished.